Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about stridor in children. Stridor is a sound predominantly heard during inspiration. It is caused by partial obstruction of the large airways that result in turbulent airflow in the respiratory passage. Strider is defined as a high-pitched monophonic sound and is usually loud and can be hear heard. Strider is defined as a high-pitched monophonic sound that is usually loud and can be heard without a stethoscope. The differential diagnosis of strider is vast, with croup being the most common cause of acute strider and then laryngomalacia being the most common chronic or congenital cause of strider. When thinking about the pathophysiology of strider, it's good to think about the respiratory tract in terms of extrathoracic and intrathoracic regions. So as a general rule, inspiratory strider occurs in the extrathoracic region and expiratory strider occurs uh, from obstruction in the intrathoracic region. During inspiration, air flows from the extrathoracic region into the intrathoracic region. When there is some airway obstruction anywhere in the extrathoracic region, this will cause an inspiratory stridor. Most causes of stridor are found in the extrathoracic region. During expiration, air flows from the intrathoracic to extrathoracic region. If there is any obstruction in the small airways uh, of the intrathoracic region, it can cause an ex expiratory stridor. Expiratory stridor is much less common. The causes of stridor can be divided into anatomical regions. Extrathoracic region, which is anywhere from the nose to the larynx and the trachea. And then intrathoracic region, which includes the distal trachea and the, bro and the bronchi, for example. Let's focus on the extrathoracic causes of stridor. Adenoids here is a lymphatic tissue that can become enlarged during an infection. Hypertrophy of the adenoids means potentially obstructing the airway, causing turbulent airflow, causing a stridor. The tonsils are also lymphoid tissues that are commonly enlarged during viral and bacterial infections. Tonsil hypertrophy due to inflammation is common in infections such as infectious mononucleosis caused by Epstein-Barr virus. But also important to keep in mind other causes of enlarged tonsils such as malignancy or complications of tonsillitis such as peritonsil or abscess. And this is much more common in adults. Macroglossia, which means an enlarged tongue, causes partial or complete obstruction of the airway depending on the cause. Causes of macroglossia to remember or consider include allergic reactions uh, causing angioedema, amyloidosis, there's also Ludwig's angina, and many congenital causes of macroglossia. Moving down the respiratory tract, focusing on the laryngopharynx, the larynx and the trachea, these structures are still within the extrathoracic region, and so it will cause an inspiratory stridor if partially obstructed. Here is the larynx, and here is the epiglottis, not the esophagus. This is a spelling mistake, please. This is the epiglottis. So again, here is the larynx, and above it is the epiglottis, which closes the entrance to the lower airways during swallowing. And this is to prevent food from entering the airways. The trachea bifurcates into the right and left main bronchus. We are looking at the lower respiratory tract from an anterior view. Now let us cut a cross section of the larynx and look at it from a superior view from the top. To orientate ourselves, this is the anterior region of the cross section and here is the posterior area. Therefore in the front, in the anterior part, here we have the tongue, which continues all the way back down posteriorly to the epiglottis. These are your vocal cords in the larynx, which can open and close during phonation. This is continuation here of the lower respiratory tract, here's the trachea. Towards the posterior aspect is the arytenoid cartilage, and posterior to this is the esophagus, which I have not drawn. This cross-section might be confusing. It is essentially a cross-section of this area, and we're looking at it from the top, but the cross-section here, when you think about it, is rotated 180 degrees. This is done, this view we have done, is because this is the view that doctors see during intubation. A life-threatening cause of inspiratory strider to remember is anaphylaxis, which is a multi-system severe allergic reaction, usually occurring within 20 minutes or so of an exposed allergen. Anaphylaxis is characterized by hypotension from systemic vasodilation, 
urticale rash, and upper airway obstruction from edema, angioedema, from cytokine release. Anaphylaxis is an emergency as the edema can cause upper respiratory tract obstruction. Anaphylaxis should be treated quickly with adrenaline or epinephrine. Continuing on with the extra thoracic cause of stridor, focusing on the larynx. The larynx, also known as the voice box, is a common site for congenital stridor. Congenital causes of stridor are not acute causes of stridor, but rather chronic because it is ongoing. Laryngomalacia is the most common cause of chronic stridor in children younger than two years and occurs more commonly in males. It is a congenital cause of stridor and is due to intrinsic de uh, deficits in the maturation of the laryngeal structures. The airway is partially obstructed during inspiration by the prolapse of the flaccid structures here. The inspiratory strider is usually worse when the child is in a supine position, so laying down, when crying or agitated. When looking at the larynx here in laryngomalacia, there is a characteristic omega sign of the epiglottis, and this is seen during inspiration. Another cause of strider is a laryng laryngeal web, which is a fibrous layer of tissue that stretches between the vocal cords. This obviously causes partial obstruction of the airways, um, resulting in an inspiratory stridor. Vocal cord paralysis is another cause. Now, vocal cord paralysis can be unilateral or bilateral. The most common cause of acute stridor in childhood is laryngotracheobronchitis, or croup. As the name suggests, it is inflammation of the larynx, trachea, and the bronchus. Despite being both uh, extrathoracic and intrathoracic uh, cause of stridor, as the name suggests, it, usually, uh, it's, it is usually an inspiratory stridor um, because mostly the larynx and trachea are involved, really. The main cause of croup are viruses, specifically para-influenza virus. Croup is slightly more common in males and is usually preceded by an upper respiratory tract infection, which evolves into a barking cough inspiratory strider and hoarseness due to inflammation of the vocal cords. Like anaphylaxis, epiglottitis is a medical emergency. Epiglottitis is mainly caused by Haemophilus influenza type B. Its incidence has decreased thanks to vaccination. Epiglottitis usually occurs in children between the ages of 2 and 7. And uh, infectious epiglottitis may present with a viral prodrome, fever, or denophagia, muffled voice, and drooling. The older child may prefer to sit, leaning forward with the mouth open and tongue somewhat protruded. There is no spontaneous cough, and stridor is a late sign. The risk of airway obstruction in children with epiglottitis is high, and so prophylactic intubation may be necessary. Here is an image. On the left, you can see a normal epiglottis with its surrounding structures. And on the right, you can see epiglottitis, where you can see swelling and edema of the epiglottis. And here, it is uh, the airway is being intubated because you can see the tube running down. The infectious causes of strider so far we have discussed is epiglottitis and croup. Another infection along the same area is bacterial tracheitis. Here is a cross-section of the trachea. You can see that the esophagus runs posteriorly to the trachea. The trachea is made up of cartilaginous rings, and here's the lumen of the trachea continuing to the lower airways. The adventitia is shared between the esophagus and the trachea. Bacterial tracheitis is infection of the trachea. Strider here is caused by subglottic edema and mucoperlin secretions in the airway. And, the, and this is due to uh, infection, obviously. Uh, most commonly a Staphylococcus aureus. Other tracheal causes of strider are congenital causes, including tracheomalacia and tracheoesophageal fistula. Tracheomalacia, which is, means basically soft trachea, is characterized by an abnormal tracheal collapse, secondary to inadequate cartilaginous and elastic elements supporting the trachea. Tracheal narrowing occurs with expiration and causes an expiratory stridor. Because remember, this area, we're already starting to head towards the intrathoracic uh, region. 
Tracheoesophageal fistula is another cause of congenital striatal, and a fistula is basically an abnormal passage between uh, two hollow spaces, and this being the trachea and the esophagus posterior to this. Inhalation or aspiration of a foreign body is another common cause of acute stridor. The foreign body is usually food. It can obstruct anywhere along the respiratory tract and can thus present as an inspiratory stridor, expiratory stridor, or both. In summary, inspiratory stridor is caused by extrathoracic obstruction because during inspiration, the pressure here drops and causes collapse. So if you think about it, if you have obstruction anywhere in the extrathoracic region, it will further um, amplify uh, the obstruction and thus you get inspiratory stridal. Expiratory stridor is caused by intrathoracic obstruction. This is because pressure increases in the intrathoracic compartment, compressing the small airways. And so if you have obstruction here, it will amplify um, the sound. So you get expiratory stridal. In summary, the most common cause of acute stridor in children is croup, and laryngomalacia is the most common cause of congenital stridor.